Good evening or morning or afternoon whenever you are listening to this. This is Rian Skills. As you can see, my face is not on there because let's be honest. Today is a very weird, very weird day. Uh, it's election day. And what better way to to handle everyone's anxieties for election day than to have two of the most uh problematic yet expiring people that you could possibly have in any any facet of any politician's life. Uh, the way we have here is Mr. Steve Arendt and Mr. TJ Steele, as they will discuss their, I guess, viewpoints for the presidency. Is that what I'm gathering off of this? No, no, Rian. Uh, they are debating each other. I'm guessing to see who's the prettier princess, I think. Not wrong. Yeah. I mean, I that's think fair. That's the gist of it. Well, unfortunately, this is one of those times where I try not to, to speak too much. But at the same time, I am at a loss of words simply because I'm not quite sure why we're here other than the debate part. So what exactly are we here for, Mr. Aaron? Well, thank you, Mr. Skills. I certainly appreciate that poignant introduction. And at this point, we'd like to welcome to the uh, forum uh, the urban sensation, the icon known as C-Red. Hello, Mr. Red. Thank you for joining us this evening. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, uh, Cactus. Good evening, Rion. And hello to you, Mr. Steele. How are you, sir? Good to see you. It's been a while. Indeed. So tonight is the night where my worthy opponent at the election in November, uh, current general manager, not president, general manager of Chicago Style Wrestling, TJ Steele, uh, is involved in this election versus me, former general manager. And we had a debate uh, at Cemetery Gates. And it was a shortened debate because it was done within the parameters of the three-hour show. And uh, for those of you with IWTV, you saw how it ended. So I felt that on election night in America, where America is at the polls making history, I thought we should make a little history on the power hour. And, and thought, find out who everyone's favorite Josie and the Pussycat song is. Yes, that uh, that could be one of the questions. And tonight we set this up uh, as the moderators being uh, Cactus Rack, C Red, and Rion Skills. Uh, they have not discussed with us any of the questions they will be asking. Uh, as Wade Hunt at CSW did not discuss with us, uh, we will be answering the questions. We'll have a amount of time with which to do it, and uh, we will try to see if by the end of this show. Uh, one of us has a queer advantage with the populace over who should be general manager of Chicago style wrestling. So Madam Moderator and the moderator men, uh, we abdicate to you. I this feel point. like I'm working in a brothel when you call me Madam. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, there's an ask for mean, cactus. This is weird. It feels like, are you hosting your own debate here? I am. I am. Uh, I am trying to set the framework, Mr. Steele. Uh, they are more than capable. He unleashes the tornadoes. Sounds scary. Um, so we will begin, uh, and uh, we will start with whomever of the moderators wishes to start. Uh, certainly, I am in not in any control this evening. I am merely a participant in this debate. I wish I had the ability to mute you. Well, if I, if you want me to shut up, I will uh, I will abdicate to your wishes, Madam Moderator. I suck up, unbelievable. I respect authority, unlike you. I am a Red. Do so. you have any questions to begin with? We're all deferring to your greatness. Oh, oh thanks a lot. Uh, my first question. Um, and uh. As a guest, Mr. Steele, I will let you answer first and then 
uh, Mr. Aaron can go ahead. Um, if you continue as general manager of CSW, what does 2025 look like? Well, first of all, I just want to say thank you uh, to one of the most amazing and special general managers that CSW ever had and has ever had. You had the foresight to bring me back into professional wrestling after my uh, neck surgery when not a lot of companies would uh, even give me a look, but you brought me back and re-signed me and I mean, the rest was history. So I, I uh, owe a lot to you, sir, um, th which is why we've all done a sea of red here. Look at all of us. We all called each other and decided that we would wear red in your honor. Um, but 2025 is going to look a lot like 2024, which is just continuing to climb to new heights. I mean, you can take a look at just about the time when I took over at CSW. And yep, I'm a polarizing figure. The crowd loves to boo me, but we all know how it works when it's a work, which is like, they're having fun. They're booing me. I'm kind of being nasty and rude to them, but it's kind of like one of those things where once it's all said and done and I'm walking into the parking lot, I can barely get to my car because people are, you know, glad handing and shaking my hand, you know, sign my baby, all this stuff, because they love what the company's become. Uh, you know, month after month, I'm bringing in huge superstars from AEW, WWE, uh, you know, brand new matches that a lot of people have never even heard of. You know, we're not running bingo halls and in, in, in little high school gymnasiums like we used to. Uh, I'm not bringing in all my friends and my buddies like some of the other GMs have done in the past. I'm literally listening to exactly what the crowd wants. I haven't even put any of my guys in the brass in heavyweight championship matches. I remember when Steve was like, oh, the moment he gets power, he's going to give himself a heavyweight title shot. I've not put myself in one heavyweight title match. I've actually never even given myself a title shot. I've been pretty much out of the active roster picture. I've been focused completely on the company and we're soaring to heights that we never have before. So the crowd can continue to boo me and they can continue to dislike TJ Steele, the character. But if you remove me and we go backwards, we're going to be, you know, in the rubble of Gurren Prep, you know, uh, running with, you know, Mitch Blake and his old buddies with uh, 15 people in the audience. So, I mean, do what you want to do, but are we going backwards or are we going to continue to climb? Uh, great answer. Uh, Steve? Well, I see that uh, Mr. Steele has prepared very well uh, for this debate. And some of what he said uh, absolutely rings true. Some of what he said is remarkable. Uh, there has been certainly an upswing uh, while he has been uh, running the company. Certainly, uh, we have seen... Uh, impressive matchmaking. We have seen uh, great things at Chicago Style Wrestling. However, this sudden desire to kiss babies, sign babies, and do all these things, it's, it, it's, it's fun to say. And I believe somewhere in the gallows of his mind that does happen. Um, but it has been pretty obvious that it has been a brass first tenure the brass have had big matches throughout his tenure and i believe he mocks the fans uh giving fans uh hygiene products calling them smelly th that sort of stuff who's helping i feel like what started off obviously i was a little bitter at first because he basically schnookered me in to a fool's errand Take full responsibility for it. I created the situation and the situation did not unfold in my favor. He made sure of that. But I don't believe he did this for the best interest of the company. Uh, certainly, some people have come to CSW under the hand of our general manager, but he likes to take credit for things that aren't necessarily things that he did. Uh, I'll leave that unknown for right now, but we can we can circle back to that. The problem is this, CSW is, was, and always shall be for the fans. And right now, our current incarnation of the general manager, though he is one of the greatest tag team champions in the history 
of this company, perhaps in the history of Chicago wrestling, the Bruce brothers known far and wide, their legacy goes on forever. And he is a quality person for the most part, but absolute power corrupts absolutely. And instead of being Chicago style wrestling for the last year, it's been the TJ Steele show. That is what cannot be tolerated because as he has crimped and preened his brass all over the damn place, there are forces behind the scenes that are ready to take control. And I'm afraid that before an election is done, the real person that is behind the scenes at Chicago Style Wrestling that he is allowed to infiltrate is going to take over. So although TJ Steele said a lot of flowery things, a lot of nice things at the beginning of this interview, I, I certainly appreciate the accolades, but don't let the nice veneer steer you away from what the obvious situation is. It's Chicago style wrestling, not TJ style wrestling. And that's what has to change. That was good, Steve. It was just like we practiced it earlier. Good job. Practiced it. Fantastic. Good job, man. You are. Beneath... We're all just kidding, fans. We're kidding. We're, just, we're kidding. We're, we're actually good, good friends. So we're good we're friends. We're, we're good vote, friends. Vote TJ. Because yeah. you know what I do to my good friends. You know what I do to my good friends. You know what I do to my good friends. I hit them thirteen times in a steel chair. I, I just pound them 13 times with a steel chair. And then you know what I do? As we're having a discussion, a debate live, I punch my friends in the face. Jeez. That's how good of friends we are. That's I why said, you're not the once upon a time, you coming to my place of business and assaulting me there too. TJ, there's a circle of violence here. You're telling stories, but not all of them are historically accurate. I'm not aware Interesting. of it. As much as I love violence, Stephen, uh, if you're concerned about absolute power corrupting absolutely, what would prevent you from being corrupted absolutely? That is a fantastic question. <laughs> GPW. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. I have been in a position of authority where I abuse that authority. I have walked down that road before, and it was a road I wish to never walk again. Mm -hmm. uh, he mentioned GPW under his breath. I will latch on to that full bore. Uh, at the end, I tried to take it over. I tried to do what TJ Steele has done. And my problem is it did not lead to anything but regret. It tarnished my good name. And I have worked for a great many years to restore respectability to what I do in this business. It was not easy. It was a long road. It took a long time to get the trust. So there is no way. You chance after that, after you screwed that up. Um. The the CSW uh, hierarchy, of which you were one, uh, brought me in after the GPW debacle. So you said I brought you back. You brought me back, too. There's a camaraderie there, most certainly. But the point of the matter is, Cactus's question, how do I not become corrupted absolutely as TJ has become? Very simple, because I have walked that road before. I have learned from my mistakes. And with that knowledge of experience in my belt, I know the path to walk. And I will not let down Chicago style wrestling. I was there in the pandemic. This company means more to me than anybody else. Those fans mean more to me than anything else. That's why I'm doing this again. Interesting response. Back to you, Red. <laughs> TJ Steele, do you have a rebuttal to that? I mean, you're sitting there arms. I'm, I'm waiting my turn. I mean, what, what people are going to, you? I mean, you just said that. So I'm supposed to answer, how do I not abuse my authority? If I'm re I just wanted to give you the opportunity. Well, to... I guess, I guess that's fair because, because Steve has accused you of abusing your authority would you like to defend yourself? Most definitely. I, I would love to. Um, so kind of going back to a few of the things that Steve had mentioned. Um, yes, we all know that uh, that Jason Hades is booking our show along with myself. Now, again, Jason can't sign off on anything that I don't bring to his table first. So it's one of those 
we're going to try to pretend like Jason is the end all be all who brought everything together. Jason says yes or no to things. I bring him suggestions. I bring him match ideas. I bring him, uh, you know, star opportunities and he either turns them down or he signs off on them. So let's not pretend like all of a sudden he's the one that's done every single thing here. It's just because he made an Instagram post that said, oh, this many years I've been here. Yeehaw. Great. Jason, you're the man. We couldn't do anything without you. But let's not pretend like all of a sudden he decided to kick it into gear the moment that I took charge as the GM. There's a reason why the shows are completely different, why there's all new titles, why the champions are happier, the crowd is happier, the, the, the match ideas are brand new. And it's not just because he decided to work harder when TJ took hold. There's a signature there. And it shows to be started just around when I did. And if you want to continue to try to say that, oh, it's brass first, it's brass first. I've beaten the hell out of the brass more than I have anybody else there. I've put them in very adversary matches. How many matches have the brass been in that have been main events since I took over? I'll, I'll give you a cheat sheet. The answer is zero. I've never put them in to any of the main event spots. Just like when Steve Boz was helping with booking when I started and then I became his brother-in-law, he never, ever gave me any opportunities, not because he disliked me, but because he knew that I had to earn every single one of them. And eventually when I started getting them at other places, then CSW started offering me opportunities because he knew that I had to make my way, just like I know the brass has to make theirs. I've not given myself one title shot. I've never put them, meaning Ryan Matthews, uh, 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 Eric, um, Inestra, or Jax, in any main event spot at all. So that kind of goofy, you know, oh, the brass first stuff is bullshit. And I'm sick and tired of it. We can talk funny and we can work here and work there. But if you want to shoot, let's just shoot. Those are guys that I think got shit on from the moment that they started in this company. And when I took over, yeah, man, I made it. A, 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 a faction called the brass, not because those were my buddies, not because I wanted to goof around, but because I think every single one of those guys, which you would agree with Steve is untapped. They were never utilized the way that they should be. They deserved opportunity. And guess what? They've done a damn fine job. None of them are heavyweight champion, but let's see where they go when I'm dead and gone, when I'm not a part of this company anymore, when I'm put out to pasture, because I bet they'll be better off. And I bet the crowd will have more respect for them and connect with them better because I did what I could for them. And anybody else that wants to say different, that wants to say that, oh, I just gave them opportunity after opportunity. No, I put them in front of the door and they kicked it down themselves. Strong words, Stephen. Uh, the mark of a strong man is the ability to apologize. Would you like to retract your statement? Uh, absolutely not. Okay. What, what you have seen, what you have heard from this man is the entire problem with his, his general manager administration. He is one of the great spin doctors of all time. Um, that's a good right. man. He does not put himself in a title shot. That's, that's true. But, you know, like I said, when I was general manager, I wasn't putting myself in title shots either. And you know what? Either not Didn't being you a championship at GPW. Didn't you put something around your waist there? Uh, that was the Battle Royal belt, and that was an accident. Interesting, interesting. But it was certainly not a world championship. It's neither here nor there. Here's the point. Here's the point. You're right. The brass before you were up-and-coming superstars. Did you give them opportunities? You did. But did you make them better by constantly breaking the rules in their favor? I find that very difficult to believe that – assisting in every situation with the numbers game every time is any way to exhibit good leadership. If you want them to earn their way, they should rise and fall under their own merits. But anytime they're involved in a match, you know, we've got strength in numbers. That's very hate keeper esque. So I find it very easy to believe that because I believe that the brass and the hate keepers are certainly along the same planes. Now you want to go out there and you want to say that, that Jason Hades signs off on what you bring to his table. Um, I'm not going to comment on that.
because there's there's a level of ridiculousness that doesn't require any kind of acknowledgement. There is only one Jason Hades. He knows who he is. He doesn't need you to advocate for what he does. But I will tell you this. CSW has done big things while TJ Steele has been in office. There is absolutely no question about the company trajectory. The question I have and the question I'm fighting is, is it because of him or in spite of him? Interesting. Um, I would like to hear what some actionables from you from me from you because i've heard a lot of what you would do given the chance but i want to hear some things of substance oh absolutely what have you done and what would you do what what have i done as general manager as the yes. to what i would do if brought back to office exactly i want i want past and i want future well what i didn't do when I was in office, is I didn't stop the hate keeping. No, I didn't ask you what you didn't do. Oh, okay. I asked you what you did do. What did I do? Oh, yes. well, that's that's very, very simple. Uh, as general manager of CSW, uh, I certainly assisted the great board of directors in moving from a gymnasium to the facility where we're in now, changing the direction that we were headed, uh, assisted Mr. Hades in reinforcing Chicago style wrestling to be the best promotion in Chicago, in the Midwest. Tangibly speaking, we, we talk about the pandemic. CSW had the biggest presence when we weren't wrestling because we got it done. We shared- What did you get done? We, we made promotional videos that kept the fans in the loop. We shared matches from the past. We did podcasts to keep everybody in the loop as to what was happening. We kept hashtag CSW strong solvent when we were shut down. Yeah, and you did that one thing where you, you had a wrestler drive all the way to Texas to retrieve another very important wrestler. And uh, you did an episodic situation there where like more views than most of the social media avenues came from that, right? Who was that wrestler? That was a brilliant idea that I was able to sign off into action. You did great. That was great. Who was that? Who was involved in that? That would be you. That was a oh. fine promotional yeah. video. Uh, you know, everybody involved, Axel Rico, Jack Moody, everybody involved in that promotional video was perfect for what was happening at the time. And then when we were outside as opposed to inside, we made those shows go well. We 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 moved mountains in regards to the pandemic and bringing the fans back into it. You know, it, it's not looked upon with any great favor, nor does it need to be. But when the time of crisis happened, we did what was necessary to keep Chicago style wrestling on people's tongues, in people's minds, as we waited for an opportunity to get back to Franklin Park. And I have dealt with nonsensical situation after nonsensical situation, and we still made everything work, and the fans loved the product. So I, you know, there, you know, you you sign big names, TJ. I, you, you talk all about it all the time. I mean, we had some big names too. You know, Rhino, Luchasaurus, they were there before you. They'll be there after you because CSW, it, it's a legacy. It's not TJ's legacy. It's just legacy. Now, what will I do? Uh, I will make and, a and priority. just for a moment, I'm opening this question up to Mr. Steele as well. Okay. I'll well, then, my turn, Steve. Go ahead, please. Uh, she asked, "What will I do if reelected?" Well, the first thing that has to happen is we have to go after the root problem that's creating the problems right now, and that is Jake Parnell, the warhorse, because right now I'm not sure Hades is even calling the shots anymore. Certainly, TJ Steele is not calling the shots. He's staging fake assassination attempts. Behind the scenes, the man that believes in nothing is doing everything. And that's what I will do when elected. I will get to the heart of the hate keeper problem once and for all. And I will put the kibosh 
on the war horse. Well, uh, first, I do want to start and say that, hell yeah, Steve, during the pandemic, that was kick ass. Uh, you and I were a lot closer then, and that's something that doesn't Before the change. legality. You did, you did, what's that? Before your legality. I don't know what that word means, but anyways, um, it was awesome. I, I think that we came together as not just a company, but as like a wrestling community. It was a very special time, and you did awesome during that um but the truth of the matter is like what will i do if i'm reelected? i'm gonna keep doing exactly what i have been doing for over a calendar year which is absolutely just kicking ass with this company we are continuing to sort of heights that people didn't even think was possible on the indie scene i mean just bringing in new name after new name making matches like i said that people haven't even heard of before uh, bigger venues, larger crowds, more exciting avenues that, let me tell you, there's surprises that you guys don't even know about that we've got planned here that I guess if the rug is pulled out from under me, I, I hope Steve will at least take the playbook and do the best he can, you know, unless another pandemic hits. Uh, and then we have to say, well, I did a decent job during a pandemic, you know, because uh, that's the reason why there was 125 people in the audience. Well, we got to turn people away sometimes where we're at because we got so many that the fire marshal will shut us down. So we're going to be continuing to soar. And, and and I'd love, Cactus, I'd love to give you some actuals. I'd love to throw some legitimate, you know, storyline things in the way to, to kind of bolster this. Um, unfortunately, some of it I'm not even legally allowed to talk about. And the rest of it, I, I just don't want to spoil the bunch. It's almost like saying... Tell your kid what they got for Christmas on December 1st. Like, I, I'd love to, and it would make a huge pop, but I'm never a guy for cheap pop. Uh, I, I want to tell a real story, and I want it to progress the way that it should, which every great worker understands that. Um, but the truth of the matter is, like, just stay patient. If you've enjoyed the product of CSW, you're going to have to go, boo, TJ, you, and then just color in TJ Steel because we we are having fun right everybody's enjoying what's going on the, you know the company couldn't be doing better I'm not going to get rid of Steve Heron I love him even though he's mad at me he doesn't like me I knocked some sense into him with a chair but he's doing great he's kicking ass along <laughs> with Stan Payne uh, in the booth like he's irreplaceable I'm not going to fire him this guy's freaking great at his job I see talent where it is and I'm just saying you can dislike me and continue to love this company, just like Steve can. He'll understand. He's not leaving. He loves this brand. Like, everyone, oh, it's Chicago style wrestling, not TJ style. Guess what? This company's in my blood. I was there on the first day, the first time we hit music and went out to do this thing called CSW. I was a brand new rookie, you know, stars in my eyes. And now it's my family, not just one of those things where people go, brother, brother, brother. Like, it's, it's in my family. This company is a part of me. So you, even if you don't vote for me, I'm not going anywhere. You can't fire me. I'm here to stay. So we're going to continue to become the company that we've all of a sudden just poof because of what I started doing become. It, it's not going to stop. There's too much momentum. So even if you do get rid of me and you don't vote for me, like, it will take a big hit and there'll be a problem, but nothing's stopping CSW. We see WWE is continuing to roll steamroll through even though that vince mcmahon is gone will the business or csw crumble if you don't vote for me no it won't but it's going to be a lot more boring again and you're not going to get those holy shit moments that you've been getting in those <clears throat> insane matches that you've been enjoying so if you want to pacify yourself and water this shit down then i guess don't vote for me but if you want to continue to be surprised continue to boo the shit out of me continue want to watch the war horse will he retain that title will he not will the brass screw people over will you know, the hate keepers continue on their rampage all that stuff's fun you guys or do you want to just go well eh, tj's gone the dust is settling steve aaron will do the right thing he's gonna put this guy versus this guy and this tag team versus this tag team and you know seven matches we're out of here at 10 o'clock no surprises so do what you want I'll be okay. Here. At this time, I'm going to stop to let our viewers know that when Mr. Steele just engaged in is called reverse psychology. 
So I want you to take the feelings that you get when you hear what he says and process it without emotion. Okay. This could Thank be hurtful. You. Yeah. Opening Thanks. up the floor back to my co-moderators. I've also got a heart out here in a few minutes, so. Okay, then may I step in before you leave? Uh, what is your current gun policy in Chicago style wrestling? Wow, There's that's a fantastic policy. question. Zero tolerance. So it's a still an ongoing investigation. Again, like I kind of said about some of our plans uh, for the future, there are things that I can't talk about in regards to that as well. Steve Aaron would like to tell you that the ear switched, that there was a magic ear versus a magic bullet. I don't expect a lot of fans to understand that being on a camera is a lot like looking at yourself in a mirror. Left look like right, right look like left. It can be a little confusing at times. So while it did appear in pictures to be one thing and then in video to be another, it gets scary and it gets confusing. Just you guys do the cheering and the booing and I'll worry about which things, which, which years, what. But I'm okay. Thank you. I, I have physical therapy appointments weekly. Uh, I've had, I actually had to learn how to listen again, which was difficult because I wasn't very good at it to begin with. Um, but, uh, you know, someone who hasn't called me once to check on me is old Steve A-hole over here. Steve A-hole. So they call you, but not my, I didn't make it up. The fans did. Okay. The gun policy. Rian, that's a fantastic question. Mm. And he's, and his answer is zero tolerance. And my answer is there's never been a gun in CSW. There never will be a gun at CSW what that was nobody understands nobody gets and why it occurred is absolutely why we have to get this idiot out of office and I use the term idiot with love in my heart because TJ Steele I do love you I love you too and I have I have been a fan and a friend for many many years and I don't know if that changes after what happens here, but for Steve Ahole, I was happily going along with your successes until you pulled out the Trump-esque assassination BS. Once you did that, once you went around that bend and I got to watch Eric Schultz talking into his wrist tape, you insulted me, you insulted our fans. You insulted the, the audience on IWTV. You basically birthed a hand. Now, there will be people that say, oh, that was very funny when Mae Young birthed a hand. Oh, that was very funny or very tragic when TJ Steele had an attempt on his life. The problem is it wasn't necessary. It didn't happen. It's ridiculous. It's insane. You're an insane man. You have wiring in your head that tells you that what you're doing is great. You're taking credit for Kyle Fletcher and Will Ospreay when you had nothing to do with it. Oh, Will no. Is great. No, I, I didn't hit Sky up and have you her You did nothing. She was, she was there anyway. Sky did sure. what Sky does. Right. Take my credit. family. Yeah. Well, you call it what you will. I think you had nothing to do with that. I'm I sure. did not get assassinated. And you know what? When you said what you said about you and Jason Hades, that tells me all I need to know. Right. TJ Steele, maybe in a moment, maybe in a period of time, you did have CSW's best interest in heart. Maybe back when you were that wild-eyed youngster and you started with CSW and you became family and you became the Boz bruise brother, when, when you did what you did and you did it better than anybody, maybe that was something to hang your hat on and say, this is me, this is who I am. But right now, you will not want to come back to this moment and hang your hat on this because all you have done is take credit for everything when you've done nothing. Mm -hmm. And that assassination attempt 
is the poster child for get this man on meds and out of office. You abuse the fans. You abuse your power. You abuse your privilege. At this point, nepotism is the only thing keeping you here. Now, you say you're not going anywhere, and that's great. I mean, we don't want you to go anywhere. We want you to slap on some tights and do what you've done best for decades. But talking on a mic, looking like coming from a member of Color Me Bad, we don't need that anymore. We don't need the brass anymore. We Still don't nonsense. need your nonsense anymore. Maybe I am not the right man for CSW, but I am going to give my heart and soul to it because that's all I have left to give. TJ Steele, for you, it's an afterthought. And you've made that very clear. Your rhetoric has been perfect. You are rehearsed. You are polished. You look just like that picture, glistening muscles from ear to ear. But when it comes down to it, TJ Steele, you would rather do it for yourself than for CSW. And that's why you got to go. With all due respect, sir, put your tights on, get back in that ring, and I'll give you a title shot. But you need to acknowledge that it's time for you to step down. It's time for you to stop this foolishness before the inevitable happens, before nihilism becomes what CSW is all about, and we can't go back. Don't do it for yourself, TJ Steele. Do it for the CSW that you joined back in the day. Do it for your family. Because right now, you sure as hell ain't doing it for CSW. Well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I've only got 15 seconds left because, you know, Steve Are you going to hit me? I just want to make sure. Every time we get in a discussion, you don't like it. You punch me or hit me. I know. My son doesn't like it when he gets punished either, but... It, it hurt me slapping you in the face more than it hurt you. Trust me. I'll bet. I, I cried about it all night. And a little secret between you and me, I'm always wearing my tights. Got them on right now, but I'm not going to show you, you pervert. Two quick things, and then I'm gone, and you don't have to worry about Steve, blah, 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 blah. Number one, very important. It's obvious. After all that bullshit, Steve is very much for gun control. So just take that. And number two, the May Young thing. What's the real thing going on here, everybody? Doesn't sound like a pro-choice guy to me. So two hot button issues right there. All you need to know, gun control, abortion. This one wants the worst for both of those categories. Just saying. Just saying. See you guys later. Wait. No, I'm here. I'm tell us his favorite Josie and the Pussycat song. You're at the wrong rally. <laughs> Delete your account. <laughs> I can't. It's my work one. I can't Fair. DJ Steele? Yeah. I'll rebut that question with three small words. Your penis is little. That's four, right? That was for Cactus Rack. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Stephen. <laughs> Thank you. We can edit that out later. All right. No, so, no, no, you, you got to no, go no. then get the hell out of here. Ryan goes, no, we can't. We can't. <laughs> Steve doesn't know how to edit, so it stays. <laughs> eh, hey, we meant to say it. <laughs> exactly. I just read what they put up on the well, television. Like, if there was ever a time for someone to press a button, it would be now, Steve. <laughs> well, un unfortunately, the debate may be over, but the power hour still has business to conduct. So if Mr. Steele has ended the debate, then we will wish him well and a good evening. And I will see you on November 15th. And I guess we'll let caution to the wind and see what happens. But tonight, TJ Steele... You told me everything I need to know. Jeez, man. I really appreciate that. I love you, buddy. Everyone else here, you guys are great. Thanks for having me on the show. Uh, I sure hope I don't have to come back again because that probably means I won and I don't need you. So, love you guys. See, Red, you're a legend. Ryan, we have to get you booked at CSW. Would you come? I'll give you a title shot.
Ryan. That's Ryan, not Ryan. I, I, well, that's that's pretty you're, similar. You're Ryan. Ryan. Yeah, in my day to day, my day to day, Ryan, Ryan. Please pretend like you know people. So now we're making fun of someone for being illiterate. Wow, unbelievable. Jeez, like Steven. reading what they put up there. They press a button, Mr. I'm Skills. Impressed. How about we say that, Mr. Skills? Been a big fan for a long time. Love to have you on. Would you please come to CSW and work a match with us? Wow. Well, this is more than enough time for, for Steve to hit a button. Steve is not hitting a button. He typed yes, ladies and gentlemen. He typed yes. I just saw it in the chat. All right. He says, oh, I'm a huge fan of you too, DJ. I just get nervous saying things during debates. Oh, that's okay, buddy. We'll have you on. Hey, don't, that's, don't, that's don't not type your rate. If there's, if there's anything that you should know about me, I don't get nervous like that. <laughs> that's, that's not my... That's not my role here. I just, I just do feel that if there was going to be an end to said debate, Steve would would be able to hit a button. But I well, guess we'll see. Steve, how is, this plays Steve doesn't hit the button because the power hour continues after Mister Steele goes to do his uh, presidential and uh, fatherly things. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm going to get my son some dinner so he can get to bed. He's nine years old for crying out loud. We appreciate your time tonight. Thank you for engaging in this debate. Uh, we will see you on November 15th. This is where you need to log off so we can continue. Yes, I will. Thank you, all four of you. I love you all. Thank you guys so much. Thank you so much. Have a good one. Thank you. Bye, guys. Good night. Wow. Don't say wow like that before I even leave. <laughs> wow. <laughs> God, if insincerity had a poster child, that would be him. Well, that was our debate for the evening. Thank you all for watching that. Uh, we hope that uh, you will come out to CSW on November 15th for uh, Second City Showdown. The main event is Warhorse versus Conan Lycan inside a steel cage. And as they assemble the, the cage, the vote will happen. And I believe in December or January, the results will be announced. So maybe I win, maybe I don't. Uh, I'm pretty sure I didn't even win this debate. Tried really hard. But when you're up against someone that is all about fake news and uh, just out and out lying, it, you, you know, now now I understand uh, how politicians feel. Uh, Cactus, Rian, Red, you were fantastic. Thank you so much for being great moderators. I'm just sorry it came to that. That was we, fun. I'd do it again. We, we <laughs> tried our best. <laughs> we did we did all right so that's uh that's our debate for the evening cactus can you give us an update on the american election that's occurring right now as we speak in real time uh let's see i mean as, as important as the leadership at csw is <clears throat> uh, tonight is where america makes history uh hopefully you all got out and voted uh hopefully your votes will be heard and hopefully change will come because, boy, we need change. Um, You know, there's not enough called yet to really say, especially because what's showing is called and the electoral vote showing are two completely different things. Um, I will say that Michigan is being called for Kamala at 62.4%. She needed uh, Michigan. She needed Michigan to, to 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 if she was gonna win, she needed Michigan. So that's good. Pennsylvania is also being projected. And they were uh, there for a long time. That might be a swing state. So it's also being projected blue. So fingers crossed. You all know how I feel. So all right. So uh, that's happening. We'll update you before we go off the air tonight on what we see. Uh, this Saturday, Rocket Pro Wrestling presents Harvest Havoc. Um, well, wait a minute. Before we get into Harvest Havoc, Cactus, are you sticking or are you going? Because I know you got things to do. I was going to stick around, but if you want me to leave, I'll go. Absolutely not. You are my favorite Scarlet Witch ever. Thank you, especially because I never intended to be. And did you see that I respected you with that Josie and the Pussycats? You did. You did you go listen to their album? 
I have seen that movie many times. Okay, fair I enough. That. I used to put Hazel. Do you remember mini discs? Yes, I do. Okay, so my dad worked for Sounds Deluxe all the way on Clarendon Hills. Um, when I was fairly young, and he got me a mini disc player. And when I was like 11 or 12, and one of the first mini discs he made me was the Josie and the Pussycats album. And then when Hazel was a baby, I used to put her to sleep to the Josie and the Pussycats album. And Three Small Words is one of our favorite songs. So you chose the right one. Well, that's that's a banger. I just want to, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but this is some of my stuff on my playlist. Can you see this? I can see, yes, Josh Groban. Yeah, I, that's my dad. I, my my at my dad's funeral, a Josh Groban song got sung, and I had to have it on here to play it. Fair enough. So, uh, go up, you see you see some things. That's Joshua Cadison. Uh, you know, beautiful in my eyes, fantastic songs. So we're going through the Jays, and whoop, I lost it. <laughs> There's Josie and the Pussycats. Right there, right between Roger Manning and Joshua Cadison. That album is a banger. If you have not listened to it, so it's so good. TJ Steele said it was. And actually, let me finish. Let me finish. Uh, if you are familiar with Canadian rock at all, one of my all time favorite artists, Biff Naked, had a hand in the writing and the vocals of the album, as did the lead singer of Letters to Cleo, which is why the singing voice sounds so familiar to people and some of the lyrics sound so familiar. Ah, gotcha. Okay, well, there, there you go. Now you know. Okay, now um, I'm done. So, just so you know, you know, you asked the question. I respected the answer. He said you were at the wrong rally. That again should tell you all you need to know. In candid moments, he is a farce. So, there you go. He is. He is one of the biggest divas you will ever see in this business. Uh, part of the reason he's got to go. But that's neither here nor there. Um, Rocket Pro Wrestling is this Saturday at St. Joe's Park Harvest Havoc. And boy, this show has got everything. There are matches that are happening at St. Joe's Park that I never thought I would see in a Rocket Pro ring. So as much as I love Rion for putting that that lovely debate photo that we have up there, I think it's time to, uh, to go uh, talk about the Harvest Havoc matches. And since... Rion is here. Uh, let's talk about Rion working. I already hate it. I already fucking hate it. But all right, here we go. Here we go. Let's talk about go. Rion in tag team action with his new best friend, Skylar Reed, who also is good friends with Cactus Rack. So, Cactus, I mean, this might be your favorite tag team of all time. No. Skyler and Rion is a tag team. I mean, that those these are people you love. Yes, that's true. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it's my favorite. My favorite is the Rock and Sock connection. So they would be like number two. Okay, well, that's I mean, that's 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 yeah. fair. I that's thought you fair. were going to go with the Hardys, but the Rock and Sock connection, obviously, they're like a solid three now that that Rion and Skyler have a tag team. So you didn't quite make uh, Rock and Cactus. But you vaulted over the Hardys. So you are Team Extreme better than them. But they are taking on the tag team that I never thought I'd see in Dillinger and the return. I popped like a child when I saw this. The return of the Ripper, Victor Wade. Get the fuck out of here right now. Red, this takes me back to CTW back in the good days. <laughs> the Dominion. Well, you know, the Dominion were before my time. I'm just saying, before Jane, before uh, the cowboy James Storm stole their gimmick, the Dominion were amazing. And we had Nate Grimm on this show before. Uh, he was in the Dominion, as was your girl, Renee Van Peebles, and the Vic the Ripper, Victor Wade. So Rip the Ripper hasn't wrestled in years. This is his return to professional wrestling, and he's teaming up with Dillinger, who is one bad motherfucker. Uh, Rian, how do you how do you win this match? How do you beat a tag team like that? Dillinger is one of the best working in the business right now, and the Ripper has had years off to let it soak in, and now he's coming back with something to prove. What what do you what do you think about this match? 
which question you want me to answer, Steve? You you want my thoughts as far as winning, or what do I think about the match? Because they are two different things. Let's start with winning and then segue into the match. Man, I hate this. All right. Uh, best way to win is to beat them both. To to beat them till they can't uh, get up and get the three count or submission or make sure they can't answer a ten count for being knocked out. That's the best way to win the match. That is certainly a correct answer. You want to talk about my feelings as far as this match, or are you good? I would like to hear your feelings regarding this match. I don't think either team should be involved in the match. But here we are. Yeah, here we are. And and I that's the thing I don't understand, because in case people haven't been paying attention, I lost the, the heavyweight title match. You and, lost and the heavyweight title like match, but you weren't given a month off like the champion was. Somehow I got rewarded because of it by getting another opportunity to wrestle. I don't I don't understand how this is a thing. There are multiple teams in this organization that is called Rocket Pro that could be involved with it. Uh you have you have the Scumbag Army. Uh you you have No Coast the Return of No Coast. They were the first ever tag champions. You have the tag champions that that are currently uh <laughs> well, not well, not the current tag champs, but the ones that were there before, as far as the final level. Uh, you have the 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 idols. You there there are, there are other teams. You even have the 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 VHS Express that to this day have not only had more tag matches than both teams involved, but have more victories than both tag teams involved. Well, uh, I think that 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 there were time. Maybe, that, well, maybe. well, that I mean, I get that, but. At the same time, they keep like there's other avenues that you can go with this match, which is why I'm, I don't understand other than undeniable BS. Because how can you have four individuals that have never teamed together be put in a match that has the stakes of being becoming tag team champions when there are multiple teams around this company? Some of them have not gotten tag team rematches, tag team title rematches. Like I don't, I don't understand the logic behind it. I mean, I I should be grateful and I should be happy about it, but at the same time, you just have to look at the rosters, see how strong the tag division is, and to see that you have four individuals that are making up two tag teams for an opportunity to wrestle, quite possibly the strongest tag team that has ever existed in the three rings that are currently holding the tag team championship. This almost sounds like a death warrant. It is. But here we are, right, Steve? Here we are, indeed. Uh, I still think it's going to be one of the matches of the night. It's uh, it's a very engaging matchup. I'm looking forward to watching it. I'm looking forward to calling it. Uh, I'm not. Your, your performance at uh, Darkness Falls, uh, the fans could not get enough. So to not have you back doing big things is a mistake. It's not good for business. Whether you like it or you don't like it, you are one of the best at Rocket Pro. You are beloved. You can't create that. You can't deny that. You can't tell the fans what they like. They like what they like, and they love you. So unless you walk away, you will be forever there. Because they love you. And that's obvious. Well, at least we can agree on one thing. It'll have to be when I walk away. I guess we'll see what happens. Uh, other matches that are uh, re really interesting, and this one uh, popped me almost as much as that one did. Uh, you've got Gunner Brave in a triple threat match versus Saban fucking Gage and Davey Bang. What the fuck is happening in Rocket Pro? They don't want this level of violence. They don't want it. Saban Gage is a straight up killer. The man has the most durable neck in history. I have seen that man die five times and he comes back. I don't know how it is. I don't know how his neck isn't broken. He must be bionic. And then there's Davey Bang, who even piqued the interest of Nick Swinky 
who doesn't comment on the local scene in any way because he hates us. And then you have the King of the North, Gunner Brave. This match, it, it, it's it's going to be crazy. Red, what do you see when you look at that poster? Uh, I see three young men with a bright future. No. Um, I see three young men that don't give a damn about their bodies. Uh, so uh, this one, this will be one of those matches where it'll be unfortunately a commentary <laughs> where our mouth will probably just be open <laughs> and that'll probably be the perfect time for Professor Blackburn to say something intriguing and he won't. Oh, that's right. He's back this month, isn't he? Yeah. He tried to become my friend on Facebook. I blocked him. Ass hat. And just let me say for the record, uh, Rian kept saying in the previous match, he didn't know why it was happening. I've got two names for you. Damien Saint, Maximus O'Reilly. Or you can use one word. Undeniable bullshit. That's what this is all about. As soon as I saw it, I knew it. Like, you know, you ever got that feeling like, ah, I'm not surprised. You know, the champ gets a vacation and Rion has to, you know, lick his wounds and say, fuck it, and get back in there. You know, so I'm not shocked. And I won't be shocked if, you know, we see 18, 19 people, you know, from the undeniables, you know, like, oh, wow. Okay. Are we supposed to be shocked? Not really. So. Yeah. I got to give my son some knuckles. He's home. Are you going to practice? Go talk to your mother. That's what happens when you have to be a dad. You got to make sure all the pieces are working in the right direction. It was date night because it was school was off. So I can't wait to hear what happened uh, when I'm done here. That's going to be very exciting. Been waiting for this for a long time. There we go. Um, Cactus Rack, Scarlet Witch. When you see that graphic about those three men, what do you think of? That Gunner Brave is going to kill the other two. Well, he might. He might indeed. Uh, Gunner Brave, I think, is uh, I think Gunner Brave is taking these matches uh, to showcase the fact that he can beat and defeat anybody he wants to at any given time. That's the talent level he has. So uh, this is going to be one of those matches. Uh, Red's right. We're going to have our mouths open because we're not going to believe what we're seeing. Uh, the next match on the docket, uh, see, uh, Rion had mentioned uh uh, this the youth, the youth gone wild, the scumbag army, uh, you know, Tom and Creed, uh, they are in action with Ratchet Flywheel, uh, taping on the, what are they, what are they calling themselves now? The Caribbean Connection, I believe. I might be wrong about that. Uh, they are amazing tag team. I don't know what they're going by these days. Um, but I have seen them at SCW. I have seen them uh, up at Northland. Uh, they are really, really talented. And as good as Creed and Heisman are, uh, there is flair and art to what uh, those two bring to a match that brawlers can't handle typically. So I think as much as you'd like to give that nod to the violence of Youth Gone Wild, uh, I don't think that match is going to go the way the undeniable thought, the way Damian Saint thought he was when it booked it. Red, what say you? Um, is youth gone? Plus, as a whole, how is the scumbag army doing? Let's be honest. At Darkness Falls, we saw Flywheel get scout live in front of a studio audience and that begs the question uh, uh are the freebirds going to be you know hanging around i mean that's a that's a real thing that's a real situation well this 
war with the Freebirds and the Scumbag Army has been going on ye at, at least two years, I believe. At least. I could be wrong. And now, in, again, in front of a packed house, Flywheel was scout ball. It was hard to watch. But wasn't that a little bit of humor? I mean, I laughed. I'm sorry. I laughed. Well, I mean, we, we, we did laugh. I have, I have no hair, so I don't have to worry about being scout. Uh, so I'm just saying, you know, welcome to the club, uh, Fly Wheel. Just welcome to the club. But, you know, are the scumbag army going to be so concerned about the free birds coming from the parking lot, coming out the crowd, coming from the back, coming from the bar, <clears throat> coming from the side entrance, that they lose sight of their opponents and not focus? Again, it just takes three seconds. Three seconds and you lose. You know, so you have to wonder, are they, they already aren't fully there to begin with. We know this, but, you know, uh, are they going to be less than, you know, uh, what they mental faculties would be, you know? Caribbean arrogance. My apologies to those young men. Uh, they are an extraordinary tag team. Uh, they have been a lot of different places, and now they are making their way to Joliet to the stage at Rocket Pro Wrestling, and you've gone wild. We'll be waiting for them. Uh, Rion, do you have an opinion of this match? Probably not. That's okay. <laughs> he'll, he'll talk when he wants to talk. All right, let's move on to the Excuse next Excuse me? Match. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Kate. I'm sorry. Go, go, go ahead. ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. That's on me. I That's on me. Question. That's on me. That's my fault. Oh, no. Rian, if you had something to say, by all means. I missed the question. I missed oh. what was said because I dropped the phone. So I am sorry. Okay. Steve, repeat the question, and then I will answer after Rian. Caribbean arrogance versus youth con wild. What are your collective thoughts? I, I, I've already made my thoughts with the tag match that I'm currently in. Any one of those guys could be a better suitable contender they they can fight each other or not fight I, I don't i don't care i know that sounds bad but i just you i i jumped in at the wrong time because i'm still kind of flustered from the current situation that i'm in so i will continue on or i will just move it over to cactus i i'm sorry miss scarlet as a legit brawler myself, I'm yeah. going to put it on the, uh, it's, you said it's the Caribbean arrogance? Yes. Yes. You like Caribbean arrogance? I do. I do too. Uh, I, I Again, the match they had at SCW uh, didn't end well for them because it, it was a, a, a numbers situation, but they really are entertaining. And uh, Kek, uh, uh, Axel Rico, uh, frequently hops in and out of this of this little group. So uh, does that mean uh, Axel is on his way back to Rocket Pro? So I'll be very interested to see uh, what happens there and what comes of it next. Uh, the next match is the Fatal 4-Way for the RPW Zero Gravity Championship. You want to talk about four incredibly different styles of wrestling in one match for one title. You have TJ Steele's beloved prosecutor, Eric Schultz, who is the current zero gravity champion. And I have very little good to say about Eric Schultz, but I will say this. As bad as the undeniable is, as much as they have interfered and run roughshod over Rocket Pro Wrestling, Eric Schultz legitimately won that title. So I am going to give him all the credit in the world. Uh, he has performed well. But he's going up against Aaron Stone, who has got a lot on his mind. And we know that Aaron Stone, when he is on his game, is one of the absolute best at Rocket Pro. But I don't know what Aaron Stone we're getting. In the picture, in the graphic, 
he, he when I first saw it, I'm like, my God, why does he look like Darth Maul? He's got that look on his face. I have seen this look a couple of times and no good can come from it. I don't know if he is in his own head as he sometimes gets, but he's been on a bit of a losing streak of late. That championship gold means a lot to Aaron Stone, especially in light of recent events. So I'm wondering what lengths he's going to go to to get it. And then you've got Devin August, who is a member of the Undeniable. So that right there tells you that there's going to be shenanigans that Red will tell you about when he speaks. And then we have the man that is changing wrestling as we know it. He is my pick in this match. He is my pick in every match. There are none better right now than the Lightning Kid, Kid Lat. God damn, that man is good. And he will look great with that championship belt on his shoulder. Red, what say you? So, thank you. Shenanigans. Shenanigans. Let's be honest. August is only out in this match to help protect Schultz. If you have noticed, August doesn't care about anything. He's not caring about championships. He's not. All he's caring about is being undeniable. That's it. So if the undeniable is it's really, it, it could be looked at as a tag team match. But it's not a tag team. I don't know right? if Stone's in the right place to be a tag team partner right now. And I'm in total agreement. I would love to see Kid Lat. I, I it's his world, already, Red. We just live in it. You know, I it's the reason why I call him my nephew. So man, that kid makes uh, promos that are otherworldly, bro. I love him. I love that kid. I want to adopt hey, him. I, I, but I, I like love, his dad too, so I can't adopt him. I I, I love him. Uh, but this match, you know, I don't care. I know uh, Aaron Stone is pissed at the world. He wants at to take world. everybody's. He wants to take everybody's head off. Um, but essentially, I I how I see this match coming down. Uh. August and Schultz are going to find some kind of way to, and I'm sure where they are, Shabak is not far behind. Um, not that dude, not the not the wind whisperer. I I I totally agree, but I'm just telling you my opinion. Um, some kind of way, Black will be neutralized. It will be two on one against Stone, or vice versa. They will uh, incapacitate Stone and take it out on Lat. Either way it goes, uh, Schultz is going to retain only because it's two undeniable versus two that aren't undeniable. So I'm going with Megaforce logic on this one. Good guys always win, even in the 80s. Scarlet Witch, what say you? I'm going to say that if Schultz wins this, it is not going to be clean. That's my thoughts we will let we'll give Rion a few moments to respond or not he was in a circumstance so if he's still in that circumstance we'll move on he's in that circumstance so we're gonna move on uh the next match is a a wrestle league gem as it were as we have uh aztec ammunition versus the suburban german and right now, the suburban German has achieved a level of popularity at Rocket Pro Wrestling uh, that's more than just uh, Jaeger, Jaegermeister. What is it? Uh, uh, Jaeger bombs. Yes, Jaeger bombs. More than just that in the bar. I haven't had whiskey on a show in a long time, so forgive me. Um, I thought it was a good to have whiskey tonight for the debate to calm my nerves. That was a mistake. Uh, but Aztec Ammunition and Von Jaeger have been warring it up all around the Midwest for a while now. And there's a means to an end here. Uh, Jesus wants that title. He is going to get that title and stop at nothing to do it. Uh, I am worried at this moment that the undeniable 
doesn't acquire another member here. Because DeSavio is looking for opportunity and with the undeniable backing may get it. So that's what worries me about this match. One-on-one, -on -one, I think Yanker, Jaeger retains. But will it be one-on-one? -on -one? Only, uh, only God knows. Scarlet Witch, what say you? I think, uh, I think the suburban German is going to keep it. But what if the undeniable coerces Aztec ammunition and he becomes part of that team? Even so, you still you're still all about those abs. Sure, if that's how you want to put it. <laughs> I'm just framing it for framing's sake. Uh, Red has stepped out. Oh, Red, now Red is back. Red, do you think yes. Aztec Ammunition joins the Undeniable, or do you think the Suburban German finds a way to win? Do you think he's joining? Shit, wasn't that clear last month? Were you not sitting to my right? I, like have, been, I have been scolded many times by many people not to assume and 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 I get that, but guess what? Our fucking eyes didn't lie last month. That's fair. We were sitting right there, and we both said, "What the hell is?" So therefore, undeniable shenanigans will take place. Why? Because they want they want control of everything. So why not recruit the? enemy of the guy that holds the title so therefore i i and i don't like jesus i don't I, this ain't my jesus this 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 ain't the jesus that i like i, I don't hope like nobody, i hope nobody like frames that off that you said i don't like jesus because that, <laughs> that, 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 that that's a mean I, that, that's jesus a mean that would be bad jose whatever the the uh the illegitimate son of the cisco kid Hey Zeus, um, hey Zeus De Sapio. De Sarantino, what? It don't matter. <laughs> I don't like him. Never have, never will. But I don't see him. I, I see him walking away with the title only because of shenanigans. That's that word again, shenanigans. And that response right there is why being your commentary partner at Rocket Pro Wrestling is one of the great privileges of my life. I just love watching you go on a tirade, Red. I just love it. Because I can't stop this shit. I mean, hell, fuck this shit. We got you and TJ still in the fucking debate. No, fuck that. We need a real debate. Let's get fucking Sane out and fucking RP that because I'm tired of this shit. It, it should no longer be called Rocket Pro Wrestling. It should just be called Here's the same old undeniable bullshit wrestling. Because that's all it is. That's all it is. Everybody now. More and more undeniable bullshit. Red, I'm just going to say, if if I lose uh, the general manager job to TJ Steele, I mean, I could bring my skills to Joliet if you'd like. That's no, no, because you're not going <laughs> to sit there and leave me uh, with Professor on one side and I love Shelly but Shelly will say something and then take off and then here come Michael Myers and if I'm not texting him but I'm just saying so no you know I, I like the way we are I like the faux man I can Let's do both it. Red I can do both I've done both my whole career so okay well if you, you know what I'm both, talking to Kevin Kevin I should be the general manager I'm qualified but that we'll, we'll save that for another day all right okay. let's move on uh Harvest Havoc continues with the Outer Limits Championship, currently held by undeniable member Ryan Matthews. But now the opportunity comes to a man that is working in a lot of places right now, making a big name for himself. I remember when he was struggling to get on various cards, and now here we are. Cash Money, Corey McHenry. I see him up at Frontline. He's a fixture at Wrestle League, Rocket Pro. IPW. I think Cash Money is your new Outer Limits champion because I think he's good enough to beat Ryan Matthews. Even though shenanigans will happen, sometimes shenanigans go against the shenanigan pullers. 
I'm gonna let Cactus take this one first because she loves cash money so much. So I'm gonna let her take this one first. It's gonna be cash money. Yeah. By the way, he's gonna beat the snot out of Ryan Matthews. There's no other way. I agree. Now, beat the I, snot out of him. So here's where I agree with y'all, but I disagree with y'all. Here's where he's yes. going to start doing this to the camera. Give and it the you know, and you know, and I'm the king, and you should be the king. Okay. Uh, that never gets old to me, ever. We got to do it every, every show. Every now. week. <laughs> so here's the thing. Again. Why didn't you do that to TJ Steele? Because he wouldn't have got the reference and it went over his... That would have been great, though. I would have appreciated it. Cash Money can beat this boy in the hospital with a broken leg, raised up on the weight any day of the week. But where he goes, Ryan Matthews, the shenanigans and Jay Beck follow. And unless somebody opens the door, J Mac is it's 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 inevitable. It's it's almost like today is Tuesday. We know tomorrow's Wednesday. It's I don't know, depending on how the election goes, I don't know what tomorrow is gonna be called. Well, you know, we know it's November, the next month is December. We know Ryan Matthews is coming, so you know Jay Beck and the Undeniables are going to follow. Like, they're right now, it is all about them protecting what they have and trying to get it all. And and that's what they want, right? Yeah. Essentially, they want all the titles. All of them. Now, the problem I have with that is what do you do once you have them? Is that the end of Rocket Pro? Or does are the rest of us just gonna get tired of this bullshit? Just beat y'all ass down. I'm just saying. Cause I might be old, I might be done, but I can swing a mean chair. I'm just saying. Sabbatical. You saw it before. I did. So. Um, I'm gonna say something unpopular here. Uh at Rocket Pro Wrestling, Ryan Matthews gets the business for who he runs with and what he does. Ryan Matthews is one hell of an, a, a, a wrestler. He is he is as good as anyone I've ever seen. And because he is running with the undeniable, he is wrestling a certain way. There is a different Ryan Matthews out there. And I hope one day Rocket Pro Wrestling sees the real Ryan Matthews because the real Ryan Matthews is pretty extraordinary. I've known Ryan a long time. Granted, he's in the Undeniable and the Brass. So right now he is my mortal enemy. And I should shit all over him. And I do oftentimes. But that doesn't change the fact that he is a phenomenal athlete. He is a bodybuilding champion. And he is one hell of a mat technician. But he's running with the wrong crowd. And he needs someone to give him a wake-up call. Someone maybe to hit him with a watch. He needs that. He could be great. I think he will be great. But right now in the Undeniable, he's not great. But we shall see what we shall see. Uh, I hear that an old buddy of mine is going to uh, give a state of affairs in regards to his mind. Uh, last month, we watched Joey Roth have his entire world turned on its ear. He lost his idols. He lost his wife. And bled all over like a stuck pig. Um, part of me is giddy every time I see him suffer. Part of me is glad that he is paying for all the shit that he put me through once upon a time. But my attitude changed just slightly when that no good two-bit trailer park hoe bag did what she did to her man. It doesn't excuse what he's done. It doesn't make me a Joey Roth fan, but it does make me say, 
that was not great. That was not fair. So I'll be very interested to see what Joey Roth has to say. I don't know what's on his mind. I don't know how much of his mind he has left. But Red, we've been around this earth revolving around the sun for a great many years. And we have seen many a woman's betrayal. Cactus, this is no disparagement on you. I'm just making a statement. I don't know what created that situation where she felt she could turn on him, but it happened and here we are. I want to see how Joey Roth responds to it. I will be listening intently to what he says because what comes out of his mouth could change the trajectory of a great many things at Rocket Pro. Red, Red what do you say? Um, For the first time tonight, we're going to agree. I want to hear what he has to say, and we both will be listening uh, very attentively. But more importantly, I want I want to know, is he going to tell us the truth and what happened? And honestly, I would love both sides because I want to know why, Roxy, why? And I mean, we, 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 again, as you have stated profusely, we have been around this world a many a time. So was Joey caught with his hand in another cookie jar? Uh, I mean, that's a fair point. I never even thought about that. You know, um, does her, does Roxy and Saint have a thing? I don't. Oh, you know, gross, gross. I'm just saying, oh, we don't know. I want to know why. That was cap, that was taxi cab floor disgusting. Let's just be honest. We, you didn't see it coming. I didn't see it coming. Oh. Now we saw, yeah, that um, the idols or what's left of them and Joey weren't on the same page the past few months, and we got shits and giggles. We laughed. We yeah. were like, great. I laughed Roxy? a lot. I laughed a lot until I saw his eyes as he walked off the stage. He but, looked like a lost child. But here's the thing. It's not it's not your girlfriend. It's your wife. It's, it's your wife. Somebody yeah. that you stood somewhere and took vows with. Yeah. Why? Like, who went home that night? Who didn't go home that night? Where's one staying? Like these, like this is a, a episode of soap that I won't answer. These questions and more. These are the, the days of Rocket Flow's lives. These I'll, are the. I'll be I'll very interested here what the Scarlet Witch has to say about this matter from a woman's perspective. Uh, Cactus, what say you? Um, my initial reaction to Joey is womp womp. Uh, but I I am a nosy bitch who lives for drama. Yeah. And I, too, would like to know both sides. I want to know what the switch was for Roxy. Because obviously she didn't suddenly become a better person. She's still, she's still on that uh, villain power trip. So what is it? What happened? Is Joey, did Joey do something? Like, right, is his hand in another cookie jar? Does she think he's not enough of a villain? Is he not bad enough? Ooh. I need to know. I need the answers. Well, Saturday at, at St. Joe's Park and Joliet, you just might get a few answers. And uh, we will certainly be asking those questions uh, Rion has known uh, Joey Roth a lot longer than I have. Uh, when that all went down, Rion, what are your thoughts on this situation? What do you think Joey Roth has on his mind? Rion put the phone down, and that's okay. We'll get thoughts from him uh, down the road. Uh, the next why man. Do keep, why do you keep putting me? I don't. <laughs> why 
I don't understand it. I I'm don't just, get it. I I'm don't. interested in your thoughts. Being I'm a man that knows Joey better than anybody. He'll figure it out. <laughs> well, there you go. So, and that, that's, that, He's been around 100 years. He'll figure it out. Just let him speak. He'll be around 100 more, too, probably. He'll, he'll, he'll figure it out. All right. Well, that actually, that's a little comforting. He'll figure it out, says Rion Skills, and Rion knows. Uh, there's a pre-show match happening. Uh, it is a uh, it is an IPW pre-show match. So we're gonna let the information liaison liaison what's happening in this match. So Rion Skills, talk about the IPW pre-show. Nope. But you're the information liaison. You're right. So, I mean, so, these, these are your people. Based off your logic, half of Rocket Bro is my people, too. Well, that, that goes without saying. That's understood. Well, can I take a shot? You, yeah, Steve Red, please. So, this is a five-man four-corner scramble match for the IPW League Championship. And ladies and gentlemen, if you've never been to an IPW show, shame on you. You should be there. But in a four-corner scramble match, the object of the match is to hold said title and hit all four corners consecutively and without hesitation. The problem is you have one person trying to do that and four other people trying to stop you. These matches are total chaos. But in this match, you have uh, some of the best that IPW has to offer. Uh, you have one half of the IPW tag team champions and Kendall I forget his last name Mr. Broadway Kendall Fire there you go all right you have Gustavo shut up we don't speak that name on this show oh okay uh I don't know the what's the mind love tell me Steve I forgot the mind's name I don't remember the mind I, I love the mind but I don't remember his name well, because I think it's got it's, something to do with Les Miserables. Les Miserables, the mastermind, Jean Paul Les Miserables. See, I, I knew there was Les Mis in there. Les Miserables. We have uh, my pick to win it all. He's not winning, but it's my pick still. He's not winning. The pretty psychopath, DeAngelo. Pretty psychopath Steve. ain't winning this match. Hey, Rachel, got to come home. He's not coming to Joliet and winning that match. Not nights are horrible at home. I'm just I telling you. Woo! And we have the IPW, the new. Let's let's make sure we get that correct, ladies and gentlemen. And the, the new IPW League champion, Jay Thunder. All five men will be in this match. It is a pre-show, ladies and gentlemen. You have to be there at 4:30 to make sure you see this. Hell of a match uh, that Rocket Pro is giving IPW a chance to showcase their stars. Let's say let, well, well, you know, that's that's good. But here's the thing that I want to say about that: Rocket Pro is giving uh, uh uh IPW is giving Rocket Pro a main event quality match for their pre-show. So let's not get that twisted. I believe Rocket Pro is the beneficiary of this match. They are not well, we're allowing both, they're both benefiting. That's I'm tomatoes, tomatoes. That's just that's my opinion. Grapes and oranges. Eh. I mean, but I, I mean that might be something either. Maximus Orion thinks. They're lucky that I allowed them in this ring. But no, I believe Bill and uh Michelle Shelley would uh agree that they are they feel fortunate that IPW is allowing them to have well, this match. again but look who's in the showcase and again I think I agree this is a main event whether it is IPW or anywhere else this is a main event um uh, 
it, even though you don't like Gustavo, I just like saying his name. Um, I'm getting a T-shirt that says "fuck Gustavo." Oh, okay. So uh, I don't like him. Never got a yes. chance. I never got a chance to get even, but uh, nobody really wants to see it. So I'll just live in anger and infamy. So I made my pick. Jay Thunder's going to roll this match. Scarlet Witch, what do you say? Uh, it's it's a hard call for me um, because I love Gustavo. What? I love Gustavo. How dare you? But Jay Thunder is going to knock the snot out of everybody here. So, What do you love about Gustavo? He's hilarious. He's not hilarious. He is a funny little man. He is part of the dumbest faction I've ever seen in my life. But she said funny little man. Of being a funny little man. Man. I don't know about that, Cactus. You're better than that. Am I? You are. In my mind. In my eyes. Okay. Rion apparently has nothing to say about this IPW championship match. We won't force him to say it because, you know, he's the information liaison. He's a busy man. But it's going to be... What a way to start off Harvest Havoc. I mean, that's just, that's, that is a match that would happen at 4.30 on a given Sunday in Richmond Park, but you get it to start the show. A match they just added today. All day Marche Rocket taking on Jake Omen. Now, I can't say that I'm familiar with Jake Omen, but he certainly looks like a badass customer. Red, what do you know? Jake Omen. I don't okay. know. Yeah, I, I know lots of people, but not everyone. All right. So tell me about him. Just understand. Uh, we have known uh, Jake, and when I mean me, I also do me. Uh, all day Marche Rocket. Uh, we've known Jake uh, for at least fifteen years now, or so, something like that. Um, Jake has been making a name all across uh, the country and the globe for himself. Um, and every time I see Jake, he is a He's gotten bigger, uh, which is ironic. Him and Marche have both gotten bigger. Um, but uh, more brutal and more dangerous. Uh, so I did see this match announced. Uh, and this is the one that made me go, holy shit. Um, because this is a match where... I'm regardless, I'm still gonna say all day Marche. Um, but it's it's not a walk in the park. It's it's not uh let's go apple picking. No, uh this is gonna be a fight. This is going to be a leave it all blood, sweat, and tears inside the middle of that ring type of match. So uh this is this might just steal the show. That's how Jake does. So, uh, I love Marshall okay. Rocket in tag team matches. I love the final level. That is no secret. But when he is in solo matches like this, a one on one match, uh, you really see what makes Marche Rocket who he is, uh, the amazing talent that he is. Uh, I can't wait to see this match. I can't wait to experience uh, the stylings of Jake Owen for the first time. Uh, Scarlet Witch, what do you say about this match? It's going to be all day, Marche. Uh, you know, I, I very find it very hard to believe or very hard to pick against Marche Rocket. Uh, it's not something that I, I do uh, because, you know, he calls me as JR. So I have a certain allegiance to him. Uh, but again... Singles match, not a tag team match. Uh, it, it'll be great to see Marche Rocket run that ring uh, as a solo competitor because it's a nice uh, it's a nice mix up from where he's been over the last several months at Rocket Pro doing tag team duties as the once champion and former champion. 
So I look forward to this match being uh, one of the bangers of the show. Uh, Harvest Havoc, this might be the best Harvest Havoc we've ever had. Uh, there's a lot going on in this show. Lots of great storytelling, lots of great matchups, lots of great first time matchups, lots of great, great, there's everything you could want in a show happening Saturday at St. Joe's Park. So uh, you got to love Rocket Pro for bringing uh, all of this chaos under one roof for one night. Uh, it, it's going to be amazing. And because we still love him, even though he has abandoned us, there was a picture of our good friend PX uh, PX, your behind the scenes reporter, him donning the tuck, standing on a bridge in the middle of fall. I, I'd like Rian to find that picture of PX. Uh, you know, as as much as as we love the Power Hour, we do miss PX. Don't don't we miss PX just a little bit? Even though he was soft spoken and didn't say a whole lot, he was really fun to have on this show, wasn't he? Don't all speak up at once. It's PX. All right, so PX. Wait, what did you say? Don't we did, don't we all miss PX just a little bit? Yes. So there you go. Cactus misses PX. And then... Uh, I didn't have to force myself to talk as much. He did it for fair. me. He, he did. That's, that's fair. Uh, let's not forget our... There it is. There he is. Look at him on that bridge. Looking all fall. I bet he's wearing white shoes, which you're not supposed to do after Labor Day. Mm. That's neither here nor there. Uh, oh, yes. the, main, the main event. Uh, Red is not looking forward to this one, but I sure am. Uh, it is the triple threat rocket to the top ladder match. Uh, we have been building to this main event for the last few months with qualifying matches. And here we are. There is no match in Rocket Pro that changes the trajectory of the title picture in the company than this match. And you have got three really impressive participants. You have got a ghost from Christmas past in Sam Knight. You have got representing the three rings, Red's favorite wrestler, Grin. And then you have former idol or current idol, Damian Gray. Triple threat ladder match. These three men, one of them walks out with the rocket to the top briefcase which guarantees them a title shot whenever they want it. Cactus Rack, what do you say about this wacky match? Um, I'm concerned for the safety of everyone involved. That's what I have to say. I don't have a choice. I don't have a pick. I just hope everyone makes it out in one piece. We have watched each of these combatants wrestle over the last calendar year, and we understand what Grin is. We know what Damian Gray is. As much as I badmouth his hair and his persona, Damian Gray is an elite talent. And Grin is, he, he is one of the most hallowed, hallowed figures uh, that Joliet has ever seen. Uh, we remember Blitz. We remember the, those that ran before us. Grin is an icon. And then there's Sam Knight, a man that was on the first card at Rocket Pro Wrestling when it started. And he had a banger of a match and hit one of the most impressive spears I have ever seen. Everybody in that building felt that spear. So I am very interested to see what happens here and who is going to get the upper mm -mm. hand in a match like this. Mm -mm. What? Mm -mm. Are you mm -mm. are you hiding behind your, your persona and mm -mm. you're not willing to face Grin? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Red, pick your winner. Anybody fucking Grim. Anybody but fucking Grim. Anybody. Well, okay, anybody but Grim, but you got to pick somebody. Cap Captain Dave. Captain Dave. Captain, Captain Dave. Dave isn't even a match. Captain Dave. Uh, uh, the referee. The referee. The referee, the referee is in the match, but not a, a, a can't win the match. Oh shit! You and have three choices: Sam Knight, mm -hmm. Damian Gray, or Grim. Uh, uh, well, I, you know, I can't stand, uh, great. I don't give a fuck how good of an athlete he is. I can't stand his ass. Uh, the Fines wants his persona back. Uh, hey. I'm a choose night, uh, cause I like, we ain't got no issues. Cause I damn sure enough ain't picking. Grin got y'all fooled. I keep telling y'all this shit. Y'all don't want to listen. 
Grand is a fucking psychopath. A psychopath. And y'all just keep going along with this bullshit about, oh, it's the three wings and, oh, we bobbing our heads. We, he, no, 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 no. He is a fucking psychopath. And the sooner y'all get this shit through y'all head, the better. Uh, get rid of his ass. I'm just saying. Um, to me, Grin and Sam Knight will find a way to cancel each other out. And I feel, although I hate to say it, uh, I think Damian Gray uh, might hold the keys to the kingdom here and become uh, the next rocket to the top briefcase holder. So that's, I, I, as much as I don't want to pick it, I mean, I'd love to go with Grin. He's the hero's choice. Uh, Grin has done more in Joliet than anybody ever has. And Sam Knight, what a comeback story. But somehow, Damian Gray seems to find a way in moments like this. Whether by accident, by fate, by karma, uh, I don't know. But there is, uh, there, there's just something about this picture and this match that, that that's rotten in Denmark to me. And somehow I think Damian Gray finds a way to win. I don't want it to be that way, but there's just something about it that makes me feel like something is afoot. So red, where are you going to be this Saturday? I'm sitting next to your ass. What is oh. And where are we going to be sitting? At commentary. And where is commentary happening? Joliet, Illinois. What's the name of that building? St. Joseph's Park. And what's the name of that company? Rocket Pro Wrestling. And what's the name of that event? Harvest Havoc. That's it. Red, you win. Well done, sir. You've had too much whiskey. Uh, maybe right. just a little bit. All right, this has been our show. Uh, I would like to thank TJ Steele, but I don't really want to. Uh, hopefully, uh, the fans will now have a forum with which to make an educated choice on who is going to take Chicago-style wrestling into the future. Um, I believe my concerns warrant the opportunity to make right some of the things that he has done wrong. But I am not going to speak at this point without giving him a chance to counter. So show up. November 15th, Second City Showdown, and vote for who you want to be the general manager going forward at Chicago Style Wrestling. Uh, it should be fun. Uh, I want to thank Cactus Rack, the Scarlet Witch, for being the best Madam Moderator ever. You're welcome. I want to thank Rion Skills for that gun control question. That was amazing. And uh, I want to thank C Red for being here and being his animated self uh, in, in the, in the face of a great many odds. So thank you, red. Uh, you are the best. Next week on this show, uh, we will have a very special guest. Uh, Frontline professional wrestling got a brand new commentator uh, at the last event. And her name is Annie O'Neill. And Annie O'Neill is one of the great young personalities in this business from ring announcer to podcast hostess to uh commentator and she will be joining us next week on the power hour uh cactus i think you will adore this person when i speak to her i feel like she could be a knockout she shares many of your views many of your opinions and she's good people i'll reserve judgment yeah, I will wait to hear. Uh, so next week on this program, next Tuesday night on the Power Hour, uh, don't miss the arrival of Annie O'Neill. Uh, if you don't know who she is, you will after that show because she is blowing up in Wisconsin, Michigan, and all places in between. Also Ohio, too. So she is she is on her way to being a global success. She will be our guest. It will be fun. Uh, I hope uh, after tonight, uh, after the election is over, that 
everybody's okay. Um, I worry about us. I worry about us as a community because there are so many people with so many opposing views and I just want peace, I guess. I don't know. Um, Cactus, you're much more savvy at politics than I am. I mean, are we going to be okay? Um, Honestly, if Trump wins, no, we're not going to be okay. And I'm not going to sit here and mince my words and I'm not going to play nice. He's a piece of shit. And if you vote for him, you're a piece of shit. And you don't care about the people around you. You don't care about minorities. You do not care about people who are queer. You do not care about anyone but yourself. And that is no way to have a country. Strong words from the very strong Cactus Rack. And I do not want to hear a word about Kamala Harris being unqualified. Not a fucking word from any of you. There you go. A prosecutor, a senator, a vice president. She is way more qualified than a failed businessman. And that is all he is. A failed businessman. America is not a business. It's a country. It's not about your fucking money. It's about the people in it. Eat my fucking asshole. Good night. <laughs> wow. That's a mic drop right there, boy. Uh, Red, we going to be okay? I, again, I, I don't know. Again, I just have to uh, put my faith uh, not in man, but in a higher power and believe regardless day to day. Uh, I'm going to be okay. Mine is going to be okay. People I care about are going to be okay. I mean, um, that's what I just have to hope for. So, um, we'll see. We'll see. Rian Skills, if you're still there, are we going to be okay? I think we're going to be okay. I just hope that we all come to the same conclusion when all is said and done. It's not about red states. It's not about blue states. It's about the United States. A wise man once said that. We are the United States. There's got to be a way to work it out. Whichever way the dice fall. Peacefully work it out to make the world a better place. That's the platform these people should be running on. Uh, and until somebody does, I don't know. I'm hopeful, but I'm nervous. For C-Red, the urban sensation. For the Scarlet Witch, Cactus Rack, the knockout du jour, Rachel. And for the real deal, Rion Skills, I am Steve. Thank you for watching the debate. Thank you for watching the Rocket Pro Go Home Show. We are the Power Hour, and we will see you next Tuesday night. Good luck, America. You're going to need it.